<laughs> That's so pretty. Ain't it though? That's all honey, man. Hey y'all, Toad here. Well, what's this little bottle we have here? Well, this is a fifth of mead, or uh, honey wine. And I've had a lot of people ask me, you know, about the benefits of beekeeping. And in this video, we're just going to muck about with one of the uh, benefits, which is making that. Uh, yeah, it's wine. Does it need to be distilled? No. And, you know, this takes a little while, so it's, I'm just going to be hitting the high points. This is not going to be a lesson in mead making. It's more going to be just something to show you you can do as a beekeeper. And uh, what we have here... This is a gallon and a half of honey. This is uh, some I, I took out of a cutout. Um, I'll try and remember to post the video for the, uh, the cutout down there. <laughs> uh, there would have been a lot more. I actually probably wore half a pint of this home after that cutout. And this is where it all starts, right here. There's another bucket over here. And we, uh, if you watch my channel and have seen before, you know, we do the beekeeping thing and... Uh, I'll prob I might try and insert some uh, video of the colony we removed to get all of this. But uh, the point isn't about beekeeping. The point is going to be uh, going ahead right from start to finish. And here is the beginning. Some nice, oh, that's got some good looking stuff right there. Mm-mm. And tasty. All right, we'll be back. Okay, what we got here... This is some of the comb that's already been uh, been monkeyed with, melted out, and we're just going to separate it. It's going to make a little hole in the... This is like just a little bit of the wax, and what you can see under there, that's the honey. So we're just pouring that through a colander. You know, most of it, you can probably see, hopefully, is staying in the pot. That's wax. Yeah, a little bit scoots by. That's all right, because the colander will catch it. All right. Now what we're doing, this is a different vessel, but the same idea, is we're straining the honey. And we're using these uh, big old Vlasic pickle jars because they're a gallon. And it's just easy to keep track of for what we're doing here. Okay. Now this water has been boiling for about 10 minutes, maybe a little bit longer. Again, it's all about being clean. And uh, if you hear a little bubbling in the background, that's my coffee maker. And I've got this ladle in here. I'll show you why in just a second. But uh, now we're just, you know, we're just gonna pour the honey in. Now the heat is off, because you don't want to scorch the honey. And notice I'm not, uh, I'm not stirring it right now. why it'll become apparent in just a second but now we just got to add all the honey and yeah most of it's pooling in the bottom and of course it's also bringing the temperature down of the water itself which of course was at 212 let me sneak in here and get this one Ugh. Now the reason I didn't uh, stir it up yet is that there's still honey in the bottom of these jars and I wanted to keep this ladle, you know, sterilized. So I had it in the water for the last few minutes of the boil and that'll just get the last bit of honey out because you know even if you're a beekeeper you know honey's precious and God knows if you're not a beekeeper and you're buying it um, man you are saving you're trying to use up every bit every bit you can and
and uh, see, I don't think there's, I kind of cheated on the big one. I heated it up a little bit. So it pretty much poured all the way out. Now, we'll go ahead and stir it up. And just basically what you're trying to do is dissolve the honey. And you can feel it at the bottom and you can see it. It'll just, you know, take a little bit. Now what I've got over here off camera is the yeast. Now the yeast is what makes this whole thing happen. Um, a lot of people think that you can only, you know, get booze through distilling. Uh, not at all. To make it simple, yeast is a living thing. You know, you all you know about it for bread and whatnot. Well, the yeast eats sugar, and <laughs> to put it crudely, basically poops out alcohol and carbon dioxide. So what we're doing here is we're mixing up this sugar-filled dinner for our yeast. And just off camera, you'll see it in a few minutes, I've gone ahead and opened the yeast packet and put it in some warm water, about 100 degrees, uh, much hotter than that, and you could actually kill the yeast. Okay, now that we got all the honey in there, we're going to go ahead and bring that must up to about 160-ish in that ballpark. And that's going to make that's going to make sure all the all the honey's dissolved nicely in the water and uh, prepare it for adding it to the cool water that's in the bucket. And that's what's going to give us our pretty close to six gallons that we're going to start with. So, uh, I don't know if the camera's going to pick it up. We're sitting at about 140 now. I'm going to bring that up to about 160 and then let it stay there for a few minutes, make sure everything is cool, and uh, dump it into the bucket and I'll bring you back when I get to that point. Okay. Well, we got the mixture here down to right at 80 degrees, and that's pretty much where you want it. So now we're going to add our yeast. And uh, now you need to, <laughs> you need to aerate it. And uh, quite frankly, you can use the paddle. Um, I don't. I kind of like the uh, this way. <laughs> and the bottom line is, just, what you're trying to do is get plenty of air in there for the yeast to activate. And uh, if I remember right, the recipe says you got to do this for about five minutes. But as you can see, the bubbles, you know, I'm trying not to do it enough to splash it all over the place, but you can see the bubbles. So this is getting very, very well aerated. Oops, a little bit of a splash. There's a good depth. That's aerating it down there towards the bottom. Alrighty then. Well, now it starts to get a little easier. <laughs> Let me get to save the dripping. Yeah, just as a side note, when you're doing this, you know, honey, sticky, all that. Now, pretty much all that's left is to put the cover on. And yes, the cover has also been sanitized on the inside and then the last step is again sanitized we have a little aerator now remember like I said when the uh, yeast eats it eats sugar and poops carbon dioxide and as soon as we get this into place I'll show you how this works I'll be right back 
Okay, well, I've got the camera in my hand because my tripod won't go this low. But uh, this is basically an airlock. And uh, in order for it to work, it has to have a liquid in it. Now, I'm going to use a rather inexpensive alcoholic beverage for that liquid. And the reason being is... Uh, you can use water, but the water will evaporate pretty quick. And also, I mean, let's face it, this is the Deep South, and we have, unfortunately, more than our share of insects around. So anything uh, creepy crawly that somehow gets through that top and gets in there <laughs> won't survive hanging out in a, in a little vessel of booze. Now, once this gets going, I'll, uh, I'll come back and show you what's happening. Alrighty, well, there's the aerator. This is about, I don't know, half an hour, 45 minutes later. And you can, one, two, three, four, five. Actually, about every five seconds, the, uh, the carbon dioxide is bubbling out. And uh, this is going to sit for... Oh, upwards of a month and uh, it'll keep bubbling and keep bubbling and you can kind of keep track of it that way when the bubbling slows down you know you're getting close but uh, that's it it's in there working and now it's just this is just stored in uh, in a spare room in our house don't want it too hot don't want it too cold you know and uh, just want to say thanks for coming along for the ride and uh, We'll do part two when it comes time to uh, open this up. All right, y'all. Fair winds. We'll see you next time around.